Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. This is Roxana Akhtar Rupi, the founder of Training with Roxana. Today I'm here to welcome all of you, specifically to invite all of you to our very exciting event that is going to be held on 27 January at United International University, Bangladesh from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is going to be the third mega round of English Olympiad. This is season three theater round. And I know that all of you are really busy with your last moment preparation. And I'm here as well just to give you a last moment tips and techniques on how you can do well in your theater round. And this video is not only for the participants, this is also for all the volunteers who are going to be involved in the event and also the parents specifically our most respectful parents of all the participants. And obviously on behalf of all our guests and adjudicators, I introduce myself specifically for this event as the exam controller this time. Let me give you a little hint about what we expect from the participants in the theater round. The participants are expected to you know, perform, to open up on the stage because we are searching for the very fine polished the finale candidates. So the people, the participants who will be you know, successful in this portion, in this part, in the theater round, will be eligible to participate in the final, grand finale. So what are the criteria that you can practice on to do well during this round. Number one, I have seen that some of you are not that comfortable of making eye contact. All right, let me tell you one thing. Why eye contact is important. I've seen somebody you know, uh, facing the audience or your classmates or the other participants, you are sometimes making eye contact with the educator and sometimes you're looking on the you know, ceiling. See how am I looking at the moment? Not making eye contact with you guys, but I'm looking at this guy and the floor and here, but not the audience. So since this is a platform which is creating leaders, which is creating, uh, fostering the public speakers, future public speakers who will be competing in the international level, international surrounding, you'll have to be ready from this stage. So that's why I'm here with these few important tips and techniques. So the next point is your vocal variety or your voice modulation. So when you are delivering your speech, most, most of the speeches are prepared speeches. So you had enough time to practice that at home. And if not, but still you have enough time left before 27 January to practice your speech. So let me tell you how to practice, how to be prepared on your public speaking topic, because you are evaluated in two ways based on how you speak. First, basically your prepared speech on uh, the pre-decided topic. And second, the question answer session. And third, your dialogue, if we keep the dialogue, if we feel like testing you based on dialogue, and of course the debate, if we feel like testing your skills on debate. So in these categories, we are going to judge your speaking skills. So the thing that you have prepared already is the chance that gives you to, you know, uh, create a very good first impression before the adjudicators. So once you, succeed in developing a very good first impression you actually are done with 50% of your exam of your competition the rest of the 50% will in, uh, includes tongue twister um, spelling and then debate maybe uh, then your dialogue the things that you'll have to keep in mind is the first eye contact you know if you don't make eye contact we understand two things. One, you are not confident. Two, you don't know the basic courtesy. You don't know how to respect people. So you can't expect others to pay attention to what you are saying. You can't expect the adjudicator to pay t attention to what you are saying because you will have to perform as a complete package. Within this package, you have your eye contact you have your gesture, you have your posture, the way you are standing, the way you are moving, using the you know, speaking area, the way you are using the speaking area. So you have a certain speaking area. If it's on the stage, it has a certain area 
within which you can keep on moving while delivering your speech. If it's in a closed classroom, you still have a certain space within which you can move and deliver your speech. So the speech is not, shouldn't be robotic. So what are the other things that includes uh, in the total package? So your eye contact, using the space properly, your expression, facial expression. So know that very well that the best part of your expression is your smile. If you smile at people, they are not afraid to talk to you. And it says that a person is judged in the first three seconds by the way he or she is dressed, by his or her expression, and then what he or she says. So make sure that you are having a warm smile on your face while delivering your speech. All right. So it includes in the package as well. Then your hand gesture. Just the way I'm doing it. Why is hand gesture important? Why is your movement important? Why is your expression important? Why is your eye contact important? Because that all these things are the non-verbal elements that complement to what you are saying. So that this is how you can best communicate to your audience. So there are two ways of communication. Verbal communication, non-verbal communication. And most of us misunderstand the term verbal communication. Verbal communication is not only spoken communication. It's also written communication. So spoken and written communication includes verbal communication. And non-verbal communication includes your gesture, eye contact, your smile, your body movement, and all these things. And what else is important is your vocal variety. It'll have to be nice and clear. You're not supposed to shout. When you have a mic, you'll have to know how to hold the mic close to your mouth, not like this. Because if you hold the mic like this, just in front of your mouth, there is, a, you know, the lung air uh, stuck in the mic and there's a noise explosion. The sound doesn't come well. We don't understand what you say. And when you shout, holding the mic, it is a total, you know, crazy thing. It is annoying often. So you'll have to hold the mic close enough but this way so that the lung air passes easily but doesn't hit the surface of the mic this is how you'll have to hold the mic this is very important and then often you stand so i think uh, I, I wish i could stand and show you how to walk so it would be very convenient for you to understand what i mean so i see somebody uh, speaking like that holding the mic like this for example if this is the mic you hold the mic and speak like that being stiff and looking at the, on, uh, at the floor or on the wall and trying to recall what you say um, uh, my name is uh, Ruxana I'm from uh, Ruxana I'm from uh, this is and th that is happening my father is um, uh, my father is don't do it this way. We understand that you have memorized it. So there is no success in delivering your speech like that. So uh, it shouldn't be a road memorization only. We want to see a performance when you are delivering your public speech. So show us the performance. And that's what makes you different, helps you stand out of the crowd. So if you, your target is grand finale, you'll have to keep all these things in mind. When you walk, walk being straight when you are while delivering your speech you are standing at a point you'll have to make sure that you are standing straight so what does being straight mean for example this is your elbow if you stuck it at your back so see your chin is automatically up so chin up shows your confidence your smile shows your confidence your eye contact shows your confidence no matter how nervous you are within yourself, you are not supposed to show it to your audience. And one most important thing is never give any negative information in the very beginning of your speech. Like, ah, oh, dear audience, I'm not a good speaker. Please excuse me for my uh, limitation or my poor pronunciation. My English is not good. Avoid saying all this negative information on the stage. Avoid saying sorry. If you felt that you have made a mistake, correct the mistake without the audience even knowing it. If still you don't know that you have made a mistake, speak such a way with confidence and boldly that the audience gets you know, confused about whether you are right or wrong. So these are the basic things that you'll have to follow. And when you practice at home, you still have time. When you practice at home, you'll have to make sure that 
The first practice should be your memorization. When you memorize your speech, you pay attention to your pronunciation, you pay attention to necessary pauses between sentences, two lines, two sentences. So the pauses should be necessary pauses, but not long gaps, long pauses. You shouldn't fumble, you shouldn't stammer a lot. There shouldn't be any unnecessary filler words. Filler words, if it's more than uh, four times you are using, um, um, you know, I mean, you know, uh, so these are the unnecessary filler words. You should avoid them. And then practice, you memorized your speech, practice before the mirror. When you are done practicing before the mirror, when you'll be practicing before the mirror, you will stuck again. Because when you are facing yourself, uh, you will have a certain, you know, a sense of, you know, uneasiness. And when you've aced it, practicing mirror practice is done with yourself, then you call somebody, a human being, some other human being. It can be a friend, it can be some of your relatives, it can be any kid from your home or from your neighborhood or any of your friend and practice before them five to ten times, ten to fifteen times and be confident delivering the same speech again and again and again before a human being. No more mirror practice. So the advanced level of practice is practicing before a human being, known human. And then finally, you practice twice before an unknown human. Okay? So this is the way you can practice speaking, your prepared speech. So uh, since the question of succession is totally impromptu, it's uncertain, you don't know what questions you'll be asked, so you just leave it to your luck, but you can win the heart of the adjudicator by your performance during the public speaking prepared speech session. And also you'll apply the same technique when you are answering the question answers. When you are answering the you know, impromptu questions or when you are performing the dialogue, when you are you know, doing the debate. So try from today Focus on being a total package. Focus on acting on the stage as a total package. And you should remember what the package includes. Eye contact, body gesture, hand gesture, expression, uh, your smile, your movement, and your voice, your language, and vocal variety. So I hope that helps all of you. And for all the volunteers, my two cents, please, your role is to make sure that the exam hall, the examination room is free from any outside noise. So I understand that all of you are doing brilliant job, doing hard work, no doubt about it. But when you see a participant is delivering his or her speech, make sure that you are not opening the door or closing the door or calling somebody in or allowing somebody to go out for a toilet break. You'll have to strictly maintain it. You'll have to wait till the participant is over and then you do your task. You go outside the room or come inside the room and when you are doing your duties inside the room, make sure that you are being properly trained with the gadgets that you are going to use to record the speeches of the performances. So this is very important. Don't make the classroom, don't make the competition room noisy uh, and don't make it uh, too difficult for the adjudicators to pay attention to what the participants are doing. So you are also a part of the examination. Altogether, you and the adjudicator should maintain a proper exam situation. So all of us will remain under examination rule, so we can't afford being disorganized. So that's my last message to all the you know, volunteers, all the boys and girls who are doing brilliant hard work throughout the event just to make it a great success. So all the parents, I wish you all the best and I would love to thank all of you to decide to uh, engage your kids in such a vibrating uh, platform where they are learning to take their own leadership as, as well as uh, being the future leaders uh, for the nation. They are taking the hold of themselves. So this is a very important you know, opportunity that you are uh, allowing your kids to experience. 
So uh, heartily, I would love to thank all of you and of course, would love to see all of you in, on 27th uh, at in United International University. Thank you, everybody. Assalamu alaikum.